we know evolution on every planet goes completely different. So to assume that extraterrestrials would look like us is from the beginning ridiculous. They should look completely different. But they told us, they told our forefathers, we created you on our own image. The so-called gods created us. So that does not controverse evolution. Of course, we are part of evolution. Ancient Aliens is an American television series produced by Prometheus Entertainment that explores the hypothesis of ancient astronauts in a documentary format. At the release of this presentation, the show has 236 episodes under its belt, and credit is due when it's due. The series is inspired by the decades-long research of Eric Von Daniken, Zachariah Sitchin, and other pioneers in the field. Two of the most featured guests are author David Childress and Giorgio Sukalos. Of course, our regular viewers know the Archive has several technical quarrels with this program, but we cannot deny its importance when it comes to exposing the masses to a more comprehensive planetary history and the possibility of paleocontact. This next part is very important. This video is based on the IMDb ranking as of July 21, 2023. IMDb serves as an objective measurement because rankings are based on anyone who would like to vote anywhere in the world with an internet connection. It should go without saying this means rankings will fluctuate from time to time. Nevertheless, this general ranking will likely persist for a good while. So, without further ado, here is Ancient Aliens Top 20. The Crop Circle Code episode kicks off with an explanation of crop circles as illustrations of high complexity arranged with mathematical precision. These formations have been found in over 50 countries and more than 10,000 of them have been catalogued since the mid-1960s. The show informs us that crop circles have been appearing for centuries and presents a pamphlet from 1678 known as the Mowing Devil that depicts a devilish figure making a circle in a field of oats. This episode briefly discusses the 1991 revelation of Doug Bauer and Dave Chorley, who claim to be the origin of crop circles. But, as the show points out, the sheer number and locations of these phenomena around the world makes Bowers and Chorley's claim impossible. The viewer is then introduced to W.C. Levengood, a biophysicist who investigated crop circles in the 1990s. He concluded, among other things, that the stalks had been affected by microwave radiation and the growth rate inside the circle was five times faster. Next, it is pointed out that there exists a correlation between these formations and the presence of UAPs in the same area. Finally, the concept of cymatic patterns is explained whereby sound frequencies are used to create complex patterns. It is asserted that crop circles may actually be extraterrestrial attempts to visually and mathematically communicate using such frequencies. Although this episode aired on March 9, 2012, it still remains in the top 20 episodes of Ancient Aliens over a decade later. This popularity is no doubt a result of the subject matter which included lunar missions, unexplained sightings in space, and strange formations on Mars. After presenting the historical facts of the Apollo 11 moon landing, David Childress posits that NASA actually had a secret agenda to investigate artificial structures on the moon. This episode also speculates that the Sea of Tranquility was chosen as the landing location because it lined up with Orion's belt and was a decision based on ancient Egyptian rituals. The focus then shifts to three space shuttle missions, STS-48 launched in 1991, STS-75 launched in 1996, 
and STS-80 also launched in 1996, all of which encountered unidentified craft caught on film. Next, the show delves into the origins of NASA and its links to secret societies and Werner von Braun. Finally, this episode concludes with a discussion of strange formations on Mars and the attempt to land humans on the Red Planet. In the episode, The Forbidden Bible, the Book of Enoch, which has been excluded from Christian biblical canons, is dissected as it tells the curious story of how Enoch was lifted to heaven. The show begins with a discussion about King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba producing a son who would ultimately spawn the Jewish population of Ethiopia. It explains that Ethiopia is the location where biblical canon still includes the Book of Enoch. The show commentators initially focus on passages from the text that describe how Enoch was taken into heaven in bodily form. They posit that Enoch's description of floating above Earth is actually a detailed account of his abduction by a spaceship. Next, it is speculated that the Book of Enoch was excluded from the Bible because it shows a different side of God. It is argued that the early church did not want people to read the real agenda of God which was to allow the watchers to control the affairs of mankind. The show then touches on the topics of the Book of Giants and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Finally, this episode considers the origin and role of Noah, who it is argued was actually a genetically altered human. The World Before Time episode delves into the ancient stories of pre-diluvial civilizations and possible structures, writings, and technologies which may have been left behind. Initially, the show examines the oral histories of several ancient cultures which describe a golden era where humans and gods co-mingled. The Anunnaki are highlighted in association with cave art depictions that are over 44,000 years old. A significant segment is dedicated to the research of aerospace engineer Mark Carlotto. Carlotto correlated the work of Charles Hapgood concerning crustal displacement in order to re-examine the alignments of various ancient stone constructions. He determined that Tiwatiwakan could be over 12,000 years old. Baalbek, the Western Wall in Jerusalem, and the Parthenon could be over 50,000 years old and Olite Tambo in Peru could be over a staggering 100,000 years old. Next, the show focuses on underwater ruins like Cuba's sunken pyramid city in Dwarka. Finally, Dr. Robert Schock is highlighted for his dating of the Great Sphinx and the theory which purports that the Great Pyramid was actually a power plant is explored. The episode Element 115 opens with a discussion about the Roswell incident and contends that the government has gained possession of extraterrestrial technology from crashed alien ships. The show quickly moves to Bob Lazar, a former government employee who claims to have worked at a secret military facility known as S-4 near Area 51. Lazar explains that he was recruited by the Navy in the 1980s to be part of a black project known as Galileo because of his expertise in particle physics. He claims that their efforts resulted in the discovery of a new element designated 115, which was used by a type of field propulsion craft that distorted space and time. Next, the show goes into an explanation of the Kardashev scale that ranks levels of civilizations by type 1, 2, and 3. The program then goes into an analysis of aerodynamic capabilities of unidentified craft recorded on film by military pilots. The episode closes by presenting the possibility that recent UFO footage released by the government may in fact be part of a moderated disclosure program. This episode of Ancient Aliens begins with the question, was there a master plan or purpose connecting the great stone constructions in our antiquity? 
The Bok Sai Chom Krong Temple near Angkor Wat and the Temple of the Great Jaguar in the Mayan city of Tikal are compared, pointing out their nearly identical construction techniques. Next, the viewer is presented with stunning examples of ancient precision stonework that rival any modern machining technology. The Temple of the Sun in Cusco and the Valley Temple in Giza are highlighted showing again their nearly identical masonry techniques. It is pointed out that some of these stones are megalithic and their placements are still unexplained by engineers today. Additionally, these structures are located at some of the most impractical places on the planet. The show discusses specific techniques such as keystone metal braces which seem to indicate a globally shared technology. The topics of star alignments, ley lines, and global geometric patterns are presented as well. Finally, the show focuses on the Great Pyramid of Giza and the mathematical knowledge encoded therein. The Power of Obelisk episode opens with an explanation of the perfect mathematical nature of these ancient Egyptian constructions. The tops of the obelisk were always dedicated to Ra and thought to be a way for the gods to travel to and from the stars. It is posited that this may be a misunderstood technology and may also be commemorations of extraterrestrial visits. Next, the viewer is taken to Aswan Quarry to explain the origin of the stones. It is pointed out that although there are records of how the stone was moved and erected, modern attempts have not been able to replicate the process. The possible purpose of the obelisk is then addressed. It is argued that these structures were used for the transmission of energy. The show explains that each obelisk was made from one piece of high-quality granite stone and the quartz content of the stone combined with an electrum pinnacle could attract electrical charged particles from the Great Pyramid. Next, the viewer is presented with Nikola Tesla's research at the turn of the 20th century with amplifying patterns present in the Earth to create a wireless energy transmitter. Finally, the correlation between Obelisk and the Ark of the Covenant is explored. Return of the Egyptian Gods is an episode that focuses entirely on a person known as Om Seti, who believes she was destined to restore the old ways of the Egyptian Gods. Om Seti was born Dorothy Eady and grew up in London, at age three, after an accidental fall, she was declared dead. But when the doctor came back to retrieve her body hours later, she was found fully awake and well. It was from this point forward that her personality changed, and she began receiving revelations of a past life. At age 27, she got married and moved to Cairo, where she had a son named Seti, and she also changed her name to Om Seti. Around the same time as her divorce in the early 1930s, she began receiving visitations from a figure named Hor Ra, who gave her information that she recorded in demonic writing even though she had no idea what it was. She later translated the writing and discovered the information was about her previous life as a priestess who was born in Abydos around 1300 BC. At this point, she possessed the ability to predict the location of ruins and artifacts, which led her to becoming a legend in the field of Egyptology. In 1951, she went to Abydos where she began seeing Seti I, not just in visions, but also in a waking state. As a result of these encounters, she was able to reconstruct the Temple of Abydos in only two and a half years from over 2,500 disassembled pieces. Finally, it is speculated that the temple's original purpose was to serve as a stargate utilizing the Osiris device. The episode Islands of Fire delves into the native Hawaiian beliefs that they are the offspring of star people that visited millennia ago and are destined to return one day. 
It is postulated that Hawaii may have been a type of terrestrial laboratory designed for genetic research and engineering in the remote past. Hawaiian mythology is explored with particular focus on their gods known as the Akua, who are thought to originate from the Pleiades star cluster, and their creation of lesser beings called the Minahuni. The show then focuses on Mauna Kea, which is the largest mountain in Hawaii, and is believed to be part of the lost continent of Lemuria. The history of Lemuria is briefly covered in the context of a war with Atlantis. Next, the show takes us to Pualoa, where over 23,000 petroglyphs are located across the landscape, and it is asserted that some of them are depictions of dimensional portals and cosmic gateways. Finally, the viewer is presented with Mauna Loa, which is considered the largest volcano on Earth, located at 19.47 latitude north, and its connection to sacred geometry, specifically the star Tetrahedron. Space Station Moon opens with two fundamental questions. First, why is there such a renewed interest in returning to the moon? And second, why has it taken us so long to return? Initially, the viewer is presented with a scientific analysis of the moon, highlighting the importance of tidal lock, orbit stabilization, and lunar surface conditions. The focus then shifts to the Apollo 11 mission and the moon landing hoax is quickly and summarily dismissed by the show. A two-minute radio gap as the Apollo astronauts first walked on the moon is presented, and it is speculated that extraterrestrial objects were encountered during that time. The show then moves to the topic of the moon's origin and the possibility that it is an artificial satellite which was towed here into orbit. Next, the discussion turns to the hollow moon theory and the overall assertion that the moon is an artificial construct engineered by aliens which could possess spaceflight capability. The episode finishes with a cursory review of anomalous structures on the surface and potential clandestine activity by both humans and aliens on the far side. The episode Destination Mars starts out with a hypothetical flash forward of mankind landing on Mars and highlighting the immense difficulties in doing so. The viewer is presented with a discussion about colonization which points out the harsh atmospheric and surface conditions of the Red Planet. It is concluded that any successful colonization would require the cultivation of food, which would not be feasible without terraforming the surface of Mars. The show then poses the question, was planet Earth terraformed in the remote past and seeded with life by the original inhabitants of Mars? Next, the viewer is presented with evidence of unnatural mass destruction on Mars' surface. The Vallis Marinus is a 2,500-mile-long, 4-mile-deep gash that many researchers believe is the result of volcanic activity. However, research has shown that this area of Mars resembles patterns of electrical discharge like some sort of cosmic thunderbolt struck it. It is asserted that other mass destruction events occurred and there is evidence of the use of nuclear weapons based on radiation and global debris patterns. This episode closes out with a discussion of anomalous formations detected on the surface and the Sidonia area is highlighted. Ancient Aliens Season 11 opened with its premiere episode, Pyramids of Antarctica. The show begins with a brief description of the continent focusing on the fact that it is the least explored area of Earth, and it remains largely untouched. A 2013 satellite image is presented that shows an apparent symmetrical pyramid south of the Shackleton mountain range. It is asserted that if this is in fact a pyramid, it would be the oldest one on Earth and may be the origin point of this type of structure. Next, Charles Hapgood's theory of crustal displacement is explained and how it may account for Antarctica moving from a more temperate climate to its current locale. 
The show then focuses on the Orontius Phineas map drawn in 1531 that shows an ice-free Antarctica and interior features that would not be corroborated by NASA imagery until nearly 450 years later. The discussion then turns to the Nazis and the Thule Society of the 1930s who were searching in Antarctica for possible extraterrestrial technologies. Operation High Jump is addressed, and it is asserted that the mission ended early because of UAP attacks on the U.S. flotilla. The episode finishes up with the account of a naval flight engineer who witnessed UAP activity and a huge entrance in the ice while transversing the no-fly zone. The Aliens in Our Airspace episode begins with a recap of the New York Times 2017 revelation of UAP footage leaked from the U.S. military. The focus then shifts to UAP accounts given by civilian and commercial pilots which far outnumber military sightings. The first one is from November 11, 1986, Japan Airlines flight over Alaska which involved two smaller oval-shaped craft that were followed by a gigantic craft the size of two aircraft carriers. Next, the viewer is introduced to Captain Eric Delgado, who witnessed a pulsating orb that followed his FedEx jet for 30 miles while he recorded footage on his phone. The November 7, 2006 incident at O'Hare Airport is analyzed, where several dozen witnesses spotted metallic cylindrical craft but the FAA dismissed this account as a hole-punch cloud. Next, the 2018 Arizona incident is presented where both a Learjet and American Airlines jet reported being passed by the same unidentified object. On October 25, 2017, off the coast of Oregon, both radar tower controllers and several pilots spotted an object. This event caused two F-15s to be scrambled but they were never able to catch the anomaly. The episode concludes with the October 23, 2002 Mobile, Alabama incident, where the pilot of a single-engine Cessna collided with a UAP and was killed. Although the NTSB discovered a larger-than-normal debris field, it is still determined the debris was from only one aircraft. The show opens in western Bolivia, South America, at the mysterious ancient ruins of Pumapumku, which is located at an altitude of 12,000 feet. Mainstream archaeology asserts the site was built 2,000 years ago. However, the research of Arthur Poznansky is presented which utilized archaeoastronomy to determine an age of at least 17,000 years. Mainstream archaeologists also claim the stones were formed by hand, but it is obvious some type of advanced precision technology was used. Several examples of this machining process are shown to bolster the case. Although mainstream archaeology asserts the blocks were quarried from 60 miles away then rolled on logs to the site, there are no trees available at this altitude. The show speculates that levitation and anti-gravity technology were used to transport the stones. The viewer is then briefly introduced to the Tiwanaku complex nearby where a statue with a beard and mustache offers a possible connection to the Sumerian civilization. Then the Fuente Magna Bowl is presented which displays Sumerian cuneiform writing. The show also briefly addresses Zachariah Sitchin's theories at this point. The H-blocks at Pumapunku are analyzed next and the theories that they may be temple door hinges or a launching ramp for aircraft are addressed. Finally, the episode closes with a discussion of the theories that could explain the destruction of the site. This two-hour special episode invites us to a roundtable with William Shatner and several of the show's regular guest stars. From the outset, Shatner challenges the others to convince him of ancient aliens. In response, Sukulos basically recaps the ancient alien theory by referring to ancient texts, which explain mankind was taught agriculture, mathematics, etc., 
by what the stories say were gods descending from the sky. At this point, Eric von Dannegan teleconferences with the group. His work, Chariot of the Gods, is highlighted and given credit for leading to a fundamental re-examination of our ancient past. Dannegan then focuses on the Book of Enoch and what he argues was Enoch's encounter with a spaceship in the celestial realm. The discussion turns to the topic of evolution and the possible artificial manipulation of the neocortex development in humans by ancient aliens. Next, Shatner inquires as to what physical evidence exists of ancient aliens. A plethora of megalithic structures are presented, including the Assyrian, Stonehenge, the temples of Malta, Baalbek, Nan Madal, Sexy Woman, and Olite Tambo. Dr. Robert Schock's conclusion that the Sphinx is at least 12,000 years old is presented. Regarding the topic of lost knowledge, the Baghdad Battery and the Dendera Temple Bulb are discussed. Sound levitation of megalithic stones is addressed with Easter Island and Pumapunku being referenced. Shatner then asks how it is possible for aliens to visit us considering the great distances involved. Theoretical physicist Michio Kaku teleconferences in to explain ETs are likely more evolved than humans and would have different propulsion systems that possibly take advantage of wormholes and Alcubierre warp drives. The discussion then turns to the statistical improbability of human DNA randomly occurring on Earth. Finally, the show covers the topic of modern UFOs and the recent government disclosures. Although remaining somewhat skeptical, Shatner concludes at the end of the show that the information presented has caused him to believe more now in the ancient alien theory. The mystery of Nan Madal begins with an introduction to the location in Pompeii about 2,500 miles northeast of Australia. World War II pilots gave it the nickname Venice of the Pacific. It is an 11 square mile complex consisting of about 100 man-made islets. Its structures contain over 250 million tons of basalt, some of which weigh up to 50 tons. This episode follows Tsoukalos and Childress as they visit the location in person. The discussion of its construction informs the viewer that mainstream archaeology contends the locals used bamboo rafts to transport the blocks, but every test of the method failed. Although mainstream attributes its construction to the Sotoliers around 1100 AD, it is speculated to be much older. Dr. Henry Burton, a structural engineer from UCLA, is also a guest on this episode, and he determines modern cranes would be necessary to build such structures. The show explains the local legend says the stones were flown or levitated into place and that this technology may have had an otherworldly origin. The last part of the episode documents an attempt to send an underwater drone to investigate the much older submerged city, Canamueso on top of which Nan Madal was built. After two unexplained drone failures, it is speculated that magnetism of the stones may have caused the outage. Finally, Sukulos concludes that Nan Madal is in the same category as the Great Pyramid and Pumapumku, and certainly connected. This episode begins with the arrival of Spanish friar Diego de Landu in the Yucatan Peninsula in 1549. It is explained that when the Spanish discovered the Maya, it was apparent that they were already a highly developed society possessing advanced concepts of mathematics and astronomy. Once the Maya's religious beliefs which were connected to human sacrifice became known to the Spanish, it was determined evil. As a result, thousands of codices were destroyed and nearly wiped out the entire written record. The show speculates that the real motive may have been to erase the records that reference sky people and a great teacher that brought them the arts of civilization. Most of the show consists of David Childress and Praveen Mohan visiting the St. Augustine Archaeological Park. As the two analyze a series of statues, Praveen observes several connections to the art in India associated with Shiva, Garuda, and the Nagas. 
The Hindu character named Maya, who was a great magician and king of the Asuras, is correlated with descriptions in the Mayan Popol Vuh of a god who came from the east. The last statue which the two review is of a figure who looks to be wearing a spacesuit and holding a cylinder or pole. Praveen informs Childress that it looks like a Hindu god named Swarna Kala Bharava. This was the god of gold, and he used a tool called a kila to mine the gold. The show then draws the connection to Zachariah Sitchin's research regarding the Anunnaki and their mission to retrieve gold from planet Earth. The Impossible Artifact episode begins with introducing the viewer to the ARC Lunar Library, which represents the first in a series of lunar archives from the ARC mission designed to preserve the records of our civilization for up to billions of years. The Lunar Library contains a 30 million page archive of human history and civilization covering all subjects, cultures, nations, languages, genres, and time periods. Next, the show presents six out-of-place artifacts. First is a prehistoric hammer discovered in London, Texas in 1936. Based on the layer of sediment in which the artifacts were found and the fact that the handle has undergone colification, it has been determined that the hammer is 140 million years old. Second is a dagger found in the tomb of King Tutankhamun. The dagger is made from meteoric iron and is two centuries older than the period when Egyptians gained the technique to manipulate this type of iron. The third artifact is the Wedge of Aoud. This aluminum alloy object was found with woolly mammoth bones and is estimated to be at least 40,000 years old. The show speculates that it could be a piece of landing gear. Fourth on the list is Rama's Bridge which is referenced in 4,000-year-old Sanskrit text. It is a 30-mile-long bridge that once connected India and Sri Lanka and was recently confirmed by satellite images. The fifth opart presented is a series of refined relics uncovered from the Shu Kingdom in China in 1986. Hundreds of humanoid figures were discovered exhibiting advanced knowledge of metal engineering produced by a civilization that disappeared over 3,000 years ago. The final artifact presented is the Antikythera device, which is a sophisticated astronomical and numerological computer from the 2nd century BC. The episode concludes with the speculation that perhaps the greatest opart ever is our own DNA, in which ancient aliens may have embedded messages for future discovery. This episode opens with Abu Sharain, which was called Iridu 6,000 years ago, and is known as the Cradle of Civilization. The Sumerian King's List is presented, which indicates a lineage of rulers dating back hundreds of thousands of years in its connection to the Anunnaki. The viewer is then introduced to Dr. Urban Finkel, who translated a 3,700-year-old cuneiform tablet which confirms Sitchin's findings that the story of a worldwide flood predates the Bible by at least a thousand years. A good deal of the episode is then dedicated to the locations of Gobekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, and the subterranean complex of Kamakli, all of which are pre-flood structures that may be older than 12,000 years. It is asserted that all of these pre-flood civilizations may be linked and could have been built by the Anunnaki. The show then shifts to a discussion about the biblical account of the Nephilim giants and the correlation to worldwide locations where local legends speak of giants creating megalithic structures. Finally, the topic of celestial alignments of these structures is addressed, and it is posited that the ancients were indicating the origin of the sky gods. Number 10 on the list is El Castillo in Chechen Itza, Mexico. El Castillo, also known as the Temple of Kuklacan, is a Mesoamerican steppe pyramid built by the pre-Columbian Maya civilization sometime between the 8th and 12th centuries AD. At the number 9 position is the Tiwatiwakan complex located near Mexico City. 
It is a first century AD construction that covers seven square miles and was the most populated ancient Mesoamerican city with a population of over 150,000. The show notes that the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Temple of Quetzalcoatl had the same layout as the Orion constellation. Number eight on the list are the Saikan Pyramids of Peru. The Saikan culture is credited with building over 250 adobe brick pyramids in this area, all of which are now severely decayed. Of particular interest to ancient alien theorists are the multiple images of birdmen resembling the Anunnaki found at one of the pyramidal sites. Coming in at number seven is El Mirador in northern Guatemala. El Mirador flourished from the 6th century BC to the 1st century AD. The most notable structures are two huge complexes, El Tigre and La Danta. The La Danta Temple measures approximately 236 feet tall and, considering its total volume, which is 2.8 million cubic meters, is one of the largest pyramids in the world. When the large man-made platform that the temple is built upon is included in calculations, La Danta is considered by some archaeologists to be one of the largest ancient structures in the world. Number six on the list is the Pyramid of Helenikon, located in the plains of Argolid, Greece. Written references to the pyramid are rather scarce, and it's not mentioned in ancient sources. Thermoluminescence dating of rock surfaces and a single ceramic shard have given an age of around 2750 BC, making it older than the mainstream age of the Great Pyramid. At the number five position is the Djoser Pyramid located in Saqqara, Egypt. According to Egyptologists, the six-tier, four-sided structure was built in the 27th century BC and is the earliest colossal stone building in Egypt. On completion, the Step Pyramid had a base length of 350 feet by 397 feet that rose to a height of 197 to 205 feet and occupied a volume of 11,670,000 cubic feet. Number four on the list are the hidden pyramids of China. The existence of pyramids in China remained little known in the Western world until the 1910s. They were documented in large numbers first in 1912 by Western traders and then in 1913 by the expedition of Victor Segelin. The show focuses on one particular legend which speculates that Mount Beigong is an ancient extraterrestrial laboratory. Aside from the mysterious pyramid that crowns the mountain, three triangular entrances at the mountain's base lead the way to hundreds of decrepit metal pipe-like structures of unknown origin. Coming in at number three is the megalithic site of Gunung Padang, located in West Java, Indonesia. It consists of a series of five artificial terraces, one rectangular and four trapezoidal, that rise at successively higher elevations. The 300-foot step pyramid is covered with massive hexagonal stone columns of volcanic origin. The show asserts the age of the structures is at least 10,000 years old, but it may be over 25,000 years old. Number two on the list is the Temple of Borobudur located in central Java, Indonesia. The 9th century structure is the world's largest Buddhist temple. It consists of nine stack platforms, six square and three circular, topped by a central dome. It is decorated with 2,672 relief panels and originally 504 Buddha statues. The central dome is surrounded by 72 Buddha statues each seated inside a perforated stupa. Finally, at the number one position is the Giza Plateau, and in particular, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It is the most sophisticated pyramid ever constructed, and its precision exceeds modern day engineering requirements. Mainstream archeology span maintains the structure was built as a tomb around 2500 BC. Anyone familiar with ancient alien theory knows this date is wildly underestimated. The show closes out by asserting that the real purpose of the Great Pyramid was to operate as a power plant. Well, there you have it, folks. The top 20 ancient alien episodes according to the IMDb ranking. 
As we mentioned at the beginning, this may seem like an unlikely video for the Archive to present. But we believe the Ancient Alien TV show has introduced this topic to literally millions of newcomers, and there is no denying it. Even though many of the show's presentations are cursory in nature, it does serve well as an introduction course, kind of like a College 101 course. The Archive, on the other hand, has endeavored to go much deeper into the weeds. The following collection of Archive productions is a compilation of many of the topics that were presented in this Top 20 list. If you would like to gain a deeper and more comprehensive explanation on any of these topics, we recommend starting with these videos.